Hello, and welcome to Camel Essentials. Today we're just going to cover a quick, easy setup for a camel route and attach it to a couple of endpoints. So without further ado, let's get started. First, I'm going to go into ChatGPT, and we're just going to type in a quick little summary of what I want. I wanted to write a camel route. Okay, so here we're just going to write a camel route, ask it to do a, be a spring boot. It's a pizza order, since I love pizza, you know, got to do what you love. And... We just wanted to generate a camel route and you know, as you can see it's already doing the, the palm and the maven palm and all that good stuff so let's just take a look at what it's creating here we've got some properties that it's going to use uh, this is from the spring boot application.properties file and then here's the actual route that we're going to use and so in this case we've got a file endpoint which is what i asked it to do we're going to split based on the carriage return at the end it's going to stream it and we're just going to process it and push it out to a Kafka endpoint. So perfect. That's exactly what we need. And it took seconds to write it, right? Awesome. And look at that. It even gave us some generated uh, um, sample data. Perfect. Great. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and get that moved over to uh, IntelliJ and see if it'll run. And now what we're going to do is go ahead and create an application within IntelliJ. So let's go ahead and come in here. we got a new project. Of course, the windows always come out off screen. With that, we're going to call this Kickstart Camel. Sounds like a good name for this. And let's go ahead and create that. That generates a new project. we got this guy over here. We need to make it probably sized right so it'll fit the screen. Boom. Of course, that doesn't always mean it's going to be easily readable, but uh, it's a start. Okay, so here we've got just a basic project. If you remember, we had different um, setups for from ChatGPT that we got to pull over. So we are going to need to start with. Let's look at the dependencies. So we got several dependencies here that we need to copy and paste over. So let's pull these in. Actually, you know what? Let's pull the whole thing in. We need the entire thing. So let's do that. Let's bring it in here. Kablam. So here we got the we got the main uh, Spring Boot and the Kafka import. So we got that. Now, what else did it want? It wanted a properties file. So we can come in here. See, we need to create a properties file. Let me move something out of the way here so I can see. And I believe those go in here. So let's do new file and call it application.properties this will be the default and let's just go ahead and paste that all right we got that now now let's come down here and let's take the java code so we've, we're going to need all of this example pizza order so we got we can name that differently we got org.example and let's just go ahead and create a new java class whoops wrong one no, we don't want to come with this. That wasn't what I wanted. Let's try this again. Java class, this time we got it. All right, so now what we're going to do is we'll just call this pizza router. Why not? Just because I lack creativity. All right, so we got the pizza router class. So now we can do something like this. Um, pizza router, we know what we named it. Pizza router. Component, name usage. Now we're going to have to build this. Don't need that in there. Com.example. All right. So here we go. So we've got this stuff in here. So now what we can do is, you know, just for fun, let's see what happens when we do Maven clean install. Why not? Let's see what happens. Whoops, got it. Got to type it right. Uh, there we go. And we get an error. All right, so now that I've got the dependencies moved over and looks like our pizza router is configured, let's see what happens when I go ahead and let's just run a Maven clean install. What do we get? Well, look at there. That looks almost too good to be true. It probably is. So now let's go ahead and 
we load from disk, or let's do Maven, and let's do reload project. Let's see if we get a good, and voila, look at that. Reload project, everything's look green, we're lit up. And we still got one error here, which we have over here. Java org.example. Ah, that's why. Let's do org.example. Boom, whoops. There we go. Now we're all clean. Here we go. Perfect. Now we've got this set up and running. All right, so now that we have everything copied over, I pulled over the, the pizza router file. I've updated the main, which basically just needed the Spring Boot application as well as the main class here. Um, and then application properties, pulled those over. And that's pretty much it. I did update so that we can run locally the using the plugin from the Maven compiler. Uh, that was also not in there, but this is something that you can look up at any point in time. Plus we'll have a GitHub with this complete application once, once I complete here. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and take a run and let's see what it does. Let's go ahead and run the Spring Boot. We get an error, which is probably based on configuration. So what I'm gonna have to do next is go out there and actually set up a Kafka environment. I'm guessing that's what this is. Yeah, you are all the Kafka brokers. So yeah, I need to set up a, a Kafka environment. Let me go ahead and do that and then we'll get right back at it. Okay, so now that we've got the Kafka environment set up, we can go look at the application property. So I do have the localhost 992, that's what I set it up under. I do have pizza-orders, that's the topic that is created. So I did add this one line to their configuration. This just allows Camel to run um, without just shutting down. So with a file component and there's nothing processing, Camel would fire up and just shut down. So I put that in there so that it will at least stay running. Let's go ahead and see about getting this up and running. So we've got Sprint Boot, let's go ahead and kick it off. All right, so we got a successful run. So it didn't take long at all. Orders are, is up here, so that's where we will be dropping our file. So the next thing is, is we need to create a file and just get it out there. So let me go ahead and do a, I don't think we wanna create it right there. We'll create it external to this and then we'll drop it in there. So let's create a new folder, new directory. We'll just call this raw data. So I got a raw data file, and I'm gonna call this file, let's just call it pizza orders onejson Let's go back to our chat GPT and grab the content. There it is. All right, so let's copy this, and let's dump it here. Let's see what happens. There we go. All right, nothing too fancy. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and just log out the body of the message too, just so we can verify um, what we're actually receiving here. Since the file's not big, it's, it doesn't hurt anything, but we'll just say reading body file. And we'll just say, and body is a um, reserved parameter here, so we can just go go ahead and do that and now we should be good there so let's okay we have the file in orders so let's go ahead and fire this up and oh one other thing i should mention is that i do have a instance of kafka i'm connected to it via data grip so that i can see any messages coming through so we'll go ahead and, and we'll run it and then we'll come back and check this So we're kicking it off, picks up the file, boom, process it. We got data messages. So let's bring over the Kafka. This is what it looks like in the Kafka consumers. Here we go. Here's the partition, here's the value, and here's the offset. Um, I have pushed a couple through for testing, so that's why we're at these different offsets. But yeah, so we're getting data through. That's what we were expecting, so perfect. Um, and as you can see, these are the different consumers. 
or different customer names. So those are all the records. You see each one created its own uh, message within Kafka. And if we go back and just take a quick look again at the route and what it does, you can see how simple this is. File input, we're just logging out a couple things. We're doing a tokenizer on the, on the body to then separate out each one. And then we're just like sending it off to Kafka. Super easy, great stuff. While ChatGPT did a great job of kind of spelling out some of the smaller pieces that we needed, it didn't do everything for us, which you know, is expected. But real quick, I just wanted to kind of step through how each route is constructed, I guess. Yeah, let's let's do that. Why not? That way you get an idea. So this file component basically tells tells Camel what it's going to read from. So there's other components that are used for things like HTTP endpoint rest, things like that that you could do where you create a rest endpoint using CXF, other things like that. But for now, just for simplicity, to make it easy, I wanted to do a file based. This just tells you the input directory and that pulls it from the application.properties. Um, here we're just naming out the route ID. These need to be uh, it, um, uh, unique because if they're not, you'll get an error on startup. It'll tell you, it'll warn you. It doesn't like to play nicely with other route IDs that are named the same. Uh, the log here, we've got just, you know, a couple of log statements. One is to show how you might pull a header off of the exchange and print that out, which is the file. And in this case, we're actually just printing out the body of the exchange. Here, we're splitting the exchange, so it takes the body, and then we tokenize it based on the carriage return. And then we stream that through to this Kafka. So obviously, within the streaming, it takes each individual body of the message, and it puts it into, the, in, into its own individual exchange. So here you'll see, that's why you see in the logs, processing order, and then you'll see each individual JSON record. And then we send off each record, which is, you know, equates to those three records being put into Kafka. And then we just log out when it's completed. And that's it, it's pretty simple. It does a lot though for how little code we are actually utilizing, which I think is the cool part of, of Camel. Now, obviously we can do a lot more with this and we will in future videos, just so that you can kind of see the power of this. I think the next one's gonna, I think I'll work a little bit with uh, how you can monitor some of this stuff because that's another powerful feature that Camel just kind of gives you with MBeans and JMX. So we'll, we'll cover that in another video, but I wanted to try and make this short and concise. So thank you for joining me and we look forward to seeing you on the next video. Later.